Well, the claim author and social activist Professor Wale Shoinka doing an exclusive interview with Plus TV Africa when he was reacting to the open letter written by former military governor of Kaduna State, Conor Boboka Uma, accusing President Mahmoud Buhari of engaging in lopsided appointments in NNPC. According to him, the president has not been in charge of affairs in the last one and a half years. Well, I've said this before. I used the expression Rip Van Winkle, you know, when I made this statement. I don't believe that there's really anybody in charge in Asurok. I'm sorry to say this, but I've been studying the trend over the past year and a half. And I believe very much that this president is not in charge of this nation. There's so many aspects, so many directions. I'm convinced that he's not really totally with it. Because as a responsible leader, and the minister, the minister of the indicted petroleum, there should even have been an address to the nation on this. It should have formed the subject yes. of an address to the nation. For me, it is so serious. It's not the, it's, it's not the fact alone, but the fact we know the history of this, and now we know what it has cost the nation, and we know that it isn't over yet. And then you say you're launching a, an inquiry. No, no, that's not. And joining us live to take a look at this is Bolaho Olojede, a public affairs analyst. Thank you, Bolaho, for joining us on the news. Yeah, good morning, Benny. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? I'm pretty good. Are you? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. On the matter of lopsided appointments raised by the retired military governor, why are we still at the point where it seems we need to state what same apparent to many already? Oh, well, we, we're not going to keep quiet about it. We, we need to continue to speak about it. Um, at least, well, now this time that uh, Omar spoke about it, it seems as if there will be some inquiries. Uh, it, it's not a first time, though. Um, then I also appreciate the fact that it is Abu Bakr Omar that is speaking about it, number one. Um, he is from the part of the country where uh, it is believed most of these uh, appointment came from. So he's a northerner. Uh, number two, he is also from that same uh, uh, constituency as a as a president himself. Uh, is, is, is a retired military man. So coming from him, um, she underline the issues for that issue. It's a form of emphasis on this. That look, I'm a northerner. I could have been said to be that part of the nation that is a beneficiary of this. But I'm telling you that this is not right. So when those kind of comments are coming from those quarters, um, hopefully uh, it, 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 should, it should create a, a new attention uh, for, for, for the president. Hopefully it should create a new attention, and which is the possible outcome we're probably looking out for. Now, the matter of tenure, uh, of the tenure um, of the president of the African Development Bank also seems to have attracted its fair share of controversy. What is your view of Professor Shoinka's response to that? Ah, perfect. You know, uh, the, 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 the matter at stake is not just um, uh, the, the fact that Trump is calling for investigation. It's, it's, it, it, it has a legal side to it. It has an ethical side to it. It has an international politics side to it. And on the whole, when you sum it up, you find out that what Africa needs to do is to stand on its feet and tell the intruder that, look, this is still African Development Bank. As African Development Bank, there are rules and codes of ethics. According to the rules of that organization, Akiwumi has been examined and has been set free. So any other call outside of the law of that institution is an illegality. So a man who should be busy addressing the death, the, the matter that has caused the death of 100,000 Americans is coming to Africa to come and tell us to adopt an illegality as a process of, a, of a solving a problem. It, it's not something that African leaders should even consider at all. We have to be frank and we have to tell him to his face that this is not the way to go. We are not going to adopt an illegality. And finally, as an economist yourself, what might Africa be needing to do now to ensure greater autonomy in the global economic space going forward? Africa's performance 
economically is suboptimal. That's because Africa does not look inward enough. So we become borrowers. When you become borrowers, uh, the people who give you money are bound to start calling the tune because it, 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 it's a natural thing. So Africa must look inside itself and stop all this borrow, borrow, when? Number two, it must not look at its environment. It's a very blessed society. How can Africa be importing food from countries that can only farm for a, for a few months in an entire year? Here in Africa, we can literally farm from January to December. So Africa must look inwards and begin to find its own true independence, not the one on papers. Like they said, Nigeria got independence in 1960. And uh, 40 years after, it is still importing tissue paper from some places. It's, it, those, those are not the kind of independence we're talking about. True independence. And we stop all this over-dependence on fund from uh, 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 abroad. Economies and public affairs analyst, Bolaho Lujede, thank you very much for your time on the news this morning. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me.